Hey everyone, Chris Grandy, chrisgrandy.com, Walnut Hill Advisors, all kinds of good stuff. Planwithchris.com. Coming to you again with another update, August 8th. Got some random thoughts using this Apple Clips app, which allows me to take a short video clip, stop, record another clip, etc., put them together. So you're gonna get this kind of cool style of video where I'm, you know, you get different different clips all, all linked together. So I wanted to say hi to you all. I just got back from, from Boston, back to California. And uh, my next trip out there is planned for November, but I had a great time. Wanted to fill you in just on some thoughts, some feedback, some planning concepts, just in, in, and some musings. So here we go. Glad you're joining me today. It was great being back in Boston. Whirlwind two and a half weeks of juggling my son who came over there a little sick from something he caught from his sister to getting in so many appointments and meetings and seeing most of you in two and a half weeks time. I do know I missed a few of you, so I do plan to make you a priority for my next visit in November. So look forward to seeing you guys and everybody else. I'm out walking right now, Get my sunglasses on, sunscreen, beautiful day, it's around lunchtime. So on the fitness front, I know every time I have a meeting, and almost every time, I'll bring up, I'll ask you a question, you know, how are you doing for balance, you know, physical fitness, social, enjoying yourself. I don't remember that Blue Zones book I sent everybody. Um, I don't know if that was 2016 or 17, but the idea there is it's not only what you eat, but it's also lifestyle. So I'm trying to live that for myself. You know, long walks. Um, I'm reading a lot of stuff about, you know, no need for super intensity in workouts. You, know, you, want, to, you want to challenge yourself. So what I've been focusing on is calisthenics and also on... Um, Wanting to add walking and swimming to the uh, to the routine. At some point, I'll do some jogging, but I like walking long distances, sort of like you know, in a way, military marches. You know, I can walk a long ways, relatively, you know, miles, no problem. Um, and the calisthenics. So in the morning, I'll do a 10 or 15 minute routine of dips, one-legged squats, uh, chin ups or attempted chin ups, um, and. Uh, stuff like that just to work you know the major muscle groups and i find that uh, you know it's something i can almost do every day because i'm not lifting maxing out to exhaustion i am doing a little bit at a time you know i might try to do 50 dips or i'll do 25 in a more intense way etc and just trying to do what i always ask you all if you're doing is staying fit keeping balanced all that stuff so right now this is my walk and um beautiful day love being out in the sun got my 50 SPF sunscreen on because I'm Casper the friendly Italian and uh, unfortunately but uh, yeah it's good to be out anyway some of the planning strategies I've enjoyed using this past year and if this applies to you if for some reason I didn't bring it up in our planning with you let me know but have had some clients who have adult kids now have graduated from school, have portfolios, not quite working yet. Their portfolios have capital gains built up in their investments. Because of the generous capital gains tax rules, these uh, children, you know, adult children can sell these stocks, realize the capital gains, but because their income bracket is so low, the current tax code uh, allows them to not pay any tax on those gains. So what we're doing is, before they start making money and getting into a higher tax bracket, sell the stock, take the gain, but pay no tax on it. What you're effectively doing is eliminating tax on that gain forever. So interesting strategy, uh, among other things. And the goal here is obviously to keep as much wealth into in your family as possible. So looking at, um, when we talk about doing like family office planning stuff, the idea is to keep as much money in the family as possible at all levels. If it's your children, it's you. If it's you passing to your children, if your children, their own money themselves, if it's your parents, we just wanna make sure that we think of your family dynamically and that we withhold, we keep as much wealth in the family as possible. Another planning topic that's come up pretty important, just had a conversation about this a few days ago, is the RMD to charity um, provision. Now, if you are um, over 70 and a half and you have required minimum distributions from your retirement accounts and you are charitably inclined, meaning you already give to charity, you have the ability to give to charity directly from your RMD. Now, before that wasn't, maybe not, might not have been as big a deal, but now 
with the increased um, standard deductions on the new tax code, a lot of people are not going to be able to use their charitable deductions because their standard deduction is so high. It's not a terrible thing, but if you're over 70 to 70 and a half, you can get both, meaning um, you can take that standard deduction, $12,000 or $24,000 if you're married, and at the same time, if you are supposed to get an RMD of $5,000, required minimum distribution, and you fill out the paperwork to directly send that to your favorite charity, let's say you happen to send $2,000 a year to your church anyway, and then you send $1,000 a year to the Boys and Girls Club, and you send $1,000 a year to Cancer Society, and 1,000 somewhere else, instead of writing them checks, if you were to directly send those contributions from your RMD, that money would never hit your tax return, meaning you would get a full deduction. You would never pay tax on that money. It would go right to the charities, and at the same time, so you would get a write-off on those contributions because they'd never hit your tax return, and you'd still be getting the full standard deduction. So totally a useful tool planning tool for those over 70 and a half. Absolutely should be considered if you're in that boat. Not a fan of lazy dog owners that leave their dog poop there and never come back and get it. Or if you leave the dog off leash and tell me the dog is a good dog as they jump on my kids. You know, if your 90 pound dog is jumping on my 30 pound daughter. You know, that's like you walking down the street and a 600 pound man runs at you saying, Hey, I'm friendly and runs you over. People gotta cut that out, you know. I'm sure your dog's a good dog, but keep it on the leash. You gotta do it. I like dogs, but just don't like big dogs running at my kids. You know what I'm saying? So I would compare the market if you had to ask me to explain in 30 seconds what's going on. It's like being out here in California with the, with, the, with the forest fires and the wildfires. When you put out fires and you prevent underbrush from burning and you keep trying to prevent it, prevent it, eventually you get a fire, potential for fire that's so big because there's so much unburnt uh, st um, stuff that when a fire does start, it's just unstoppable. And that's we've had a few of those out here. Market's the same way. We have, I feel like we've had so many years now of just preventing any kind of serious correction, any kind of, of loss, that, uh, that when we actually do have some kind of correction, I really think it's gonna feed on itself. It's gonna be, it's gonna be very weird and different. So, though we're long and everybody's in stocks and we're invested, um, I do feel in the back of my mind that's how this is gonna play out. So I'm in an area here, if you can see around, there's a lot of uh, townhouses. So there are a lot of these type of developments in this area. Unlike Boston, where we have some of these in the suburbs and you know, there's a few more now in the city where they could find land, but typically out here, there was so much more land. This is what they built, just hundreds of townhouses, communities with the swimming pool, tennis courts as part of the community. Uh, they're just forever and ever. So, you know, these neighborhoods all look the same in this area. Interesting stuff. You know, whether you're in a fancy area or a regular area, you just have, you know, a lot of real estate looking the same. I was in uh, Green Bray yesterday, which I usually can see. I'll show you, share some pictures on this video. Um, usually see it from the highway. I've never walked down there, but just some beautiful um, canal front real estate. So here's the swimming pool back there. More developments. You know, nice places. These are all like three bedroom, two bath, two car garage, row houses. What's interesting out here, the HOA fees tend to be pretty darn high. I'm not sure what you get for the money. Maybe it's the swimming pool. Although this area here, they do have their own security. I think we're paying for that. But interesting stuff, you know, there's no heat, water's not included, stuff like that. So HOA fees are like four or $500 a month for regular units. These aren't expensive, relatively. Another planning topic that should be exploited. You're younger, uh, let's say you were still in grad school, maybe you're working part-time, uh, you know, you think like a family. I always appreciate and um, you know, we'd like to see more people plan as families, you know, kids. I understand you want your kids to make it on their own. You don't want to, to uh, cripple them financially by giving them things, and I'm all for that. But if you think multi-generationally, um, you know, you realize that low-income people get tax credits for retirement plan contributions. 
So if you contribute to a Roth IRA, theoretically, you could potentially get a tax credit. Um, I mentioned the other thing, I'm, the other topic I mentioned about capital gains breaks for, for lower income people. These really can benefit, not, not just, again, I don't think those things are gonna super benefit uh, low income families because it's hard to save. So they're not really gonna be able to put away $5,000 into the IRA and get a tax credit. They might be struggling, but if, you know, if you're a student and you're getting some help from your parents and you're earning some money, you, you could at the same time, if you're not a dependent, be getting these tax credits and tax breaks um, while you're saving and such, even if your parents put money into the IRA for you, even if you're, you know, so I mean, these are situations that uh, on both ends, you know, if you're older, there's things you could be doing, even, but if you're younger or low income, there's things you should be doing. And if you're a family thinking about multiple generations at the same time, all this stuff can be working together for that, you. That's enough of my random ramblings from my walk today on Wednesday, August 8th. Um, I'll put on some pictures at the end, just highlighting a few of the things we've done and seen and eaten around here lately. And also from my trip back to Boston. And look forward to talking to you guys again. This is, you know, sometimes I'll do an update video where I'm sitting at a table. Sometimes I'll do it when I'm walking. Hopefully more walking. Oh, thanks guys for watching. Any questions down below, email me, call me, whatever works for you. Look forward to hearing from you guys. Have a great day. Thanks again.